Hi guys, it's Charlie, and today I'm going to be talking about my top surgery. I travelled down the day before because my surgery was quite early. I had to be in the hospital at 8am, so it's about three and a half hours from where I live. We travelled down the night before, we stayed in a hotel. I woke up in the morning, I filmed this little thing. Hi guys, it's Charlie. Um, it's quarter past seven, I've just woken up, we're about to head off to the hospital. I had a meal last night, and I'm not allowed to eat anything from now to my operation. Um, but yeah, just about to head off, and I will keep you guys informed as I go along. So basically, I was fasting. Uh, it wasn't too bad because the only thing I wasn't allowed to eat pretty much was breakfast. Um, I wasn't allowed to eat from like 2 a.m., but obviously I wasn't up at 2 a.m. eating food anyway, so it didn't really matter. So the only thing I really had to skip was breakfast. Um, so I got into the hospital around 8am, a little bit earlier, and they called me in pretty much straight away. I sat there for a bit, and they brought the nurse in. Um, the clothes were already on the bed, so I had a little kind of hospital gown and some stockings. Um, it was very flattering, but those were already on the bed. I also had some like net underwear thingies, also very flattering, super uncomfortable. <laughs> but... Um, I didn't have to put those on straight away, they were just ready on the bed. So the nurse came in and asked me a couple of questions. Uh, kind of stuff we've been over already, a few things. Um, nothing that I hadn't already been asked about. And nothing that I really didn't want to discuss in front of my family, but they did ask kind of each time. And then uh, Mr. Nishal came in and he had to draw on me. Uh, so I think I was already in my gown at this point, I'd already... They kind of told me I soon got dressed. Um, stockings were a nightmare to get on, and I'll talk about that a bit later as well. But yeah, I got everything on. Nurse helped me put my stockings on the first time, and then Mr. Nietzsche came in. He asked if I was um, okay to get drawn on in front of my family, um, and I said I would rather that they left, which they were fine with. Like, they know that I don't really show my chest to anyone. So they left the room. He sat on the bed and I stood in front of him and he just kind of drew on me. Um, it was no worse than the original consultation of him, like, feeling to see whether I'd be able to have Perry. Um, in fact, I would say it was slightly better. So I got drawn on, I had to wait in the room a little bit longer, and then the anaesthetist came in. And he asked me a couple of questions. Um, he didn't ask if I was okay with them being in front of my family. Um, and he did ask me whether I smoke, which I don't luckily, but if I did, my mum would be really mad about it, so yeah. But he did ask me a few questions. Um, to be fair, I had already said I don't smoke in an earlier consultation, so maybe if that was yes, then they would have told me that they need to leave or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, I had a few questions from him, then he left. And then the nurse came back in, and I had a couple more questions from them. They were just writing stuff down in this folder, I don't know. Um, and then they informed me it was going to be time for surgery soon. So I <laughs> walked like through, so I, I hugged my mum and my sister and I like walked through um, to this like pre-surgery room. Um, it was actually super spooky looking, like <laughs> it did look really creepy, it looked like something out of Alien, I don't know. Uh, so you walk through the first door and then they like lock behind you and they sat me down, ran me through the same questions, kind of like, what's my name, all of this, made sure I was like, they're operating on the right person, double checked a couple of things with me, and then they, like, got me to remove anything that I wasn't allowed to have, um, they undid the back of my gown but kept the front on, and then I had to go lie on the surgery table, um, he then started with anaesthetizing me, so he put the needle in, and I think, I guess I counted to 10. I don't remember how far I got. Um, and that's the last thing I really remember. I've got to ask my family to film me when I woke up, which is such a shame, because apparently I had an entire conversation with them that I did not remember. So um, from my point of view, I woke up, and my sister and my mum were there, and <laughs> they'd gone for lunch while I was having my surgery. So I woke up and I was like, Hey, how was lunch? I was super groggy. I, I was on a lot of pain medication and I was still 
from like the anesthetic. I was still a little bit weird. So I was like, hey, how was lunch? And my sister was like, yeah, it was just as good as the last time you asked. And um, I'd apparently had this whole conversation with them before. So clearly I am a one track pony. I <laughs> only ask the same questions, but yeah. So the first day I was like, I didn't feel any pain at all. I was super tired. I did a lot of kind of sleeping and waking up and I filmed this while I was in the hospital. Hi guys, it's Charlie and I am four and a half hours post top surgery. Um, so I went into my surgery at 9.30 and I've just come out um, a few hours ago. They've said that everything went okay, no complications. I haven't actually spoken to my surgeon yet so I don't know kind of things from him. I haven't been able to look at my chest because I'm all bandaged up so I haven't been able to see the results yet. But I'm also aware that the results are not going to be an accurate portrayal of the final, final kind of picture of it. Um, so, I will talk a bit later about what they did, but, um, I just thought I'd do a quick update of the actual hospital. So I've got my, I've got my chest done, I've got my drains in. Um, I am on painkillers at the moment. Um, I do feel a little bit of pain kind of underneath my armpit on both sides, but I say especially this side. And um, I'm not really able to do much yet. I've been out of bed once and I'm not really able to stretch my arms too far. So everything has to be kind of in the near nearby area. But yeah. As you can tell, I was pretty drugged up. So um, I stayed in over that night. Um, I woke up the next day. They kind of they kind of woke me up during the night and stuff. They kept giving me painkillers. Like I was pleasantly surprised by how little pain I was in. Um, but I had drains in either side as well, which I could feel. So then, the next day I was there again. I was still super tired. I think it was the codeine. I was on like two codeine every six hours, plus the anaesthetic, which just absolutely knocked me out. Like. Um, not that I was still on anaesthetic, like the, the leftover with the codeine and the ibuprofen and then also on paracetamol. Uh, so on the second day I was getting discharged, so I saw Peter Neeshaw, he came in and um, basically ran me through everything that happened. So um, it's quite a long video, I think I'm going to put a clip of it here, like the important parts. In the whole video he shows me how to use the drains this, that and the other, talk to me about stuff like that. So I will post that entire video separately. Um, if you want to watch that, you can do. It's probably not that interesting, but you can just hear us talking about this, that and the other. So yeah. Slightly lower than I would have wanted them ideally, but as I say, you know, that was the, 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 the amount of skin tension that. we could no. get. Yeah. But, but no, it looks great. Uh, that was the first time I saw my chest. I was still really drowsy. Um, I was also super excited, but I never really know how to handle excitement in front of other people. Like, I'm really bad at getting gifts and stuff, because as much as I love it, I would be like, I don't know. It always seems kind of fake, but I was like, wow, this is super amazing. Um, my family were really impressed. And then he basically bandaged me back up and talked me through everything else. And then, yeah, I got my bag of painkillers and it was time to go home. So what I would really recommend bringing with you, if you can, is a travel pillow and a cushion, because those two things were the best thing ever. I put my seat all the way back and I put the cushion over my chest to stop the seat belt from hitting it. And then I put the travel pillow on my neck and I just slept, pretty much. Um, I was awake for some of it, but it wasn't too bad. I still had a lot of the painkillers. was home a couple days when I finally started feeling the pain. It was more the drains than my chest, but like I think just having them was a bit of a nightmare. We started off by having bandages, which I wore around me. 
um, to kind of keep them by my side. And then they recommended using a lanyard to keep them over my chest. But what we ended up doing is I put, put them in my little like fanny pack thing, like my bum bag, because it just meant that I got to keep my arms free. Um, but then as I tried to kind of come off the painkillers and I think my mum also was strongly suggesting I stop using the codeine because it is a more addictive painkiller and it did make me drowsy. So there were kind of pros and cons, but I did start to feel the pain a lot more. And it kind of, it made me really grumpy in all of this. Like I wasn't necessarily sad, but I couldn't go outside. It was lovely weather. I was in pain and I just kind of felt like I couldn't do anything. So I was a bit grumpy for the first kind of week of that. I stayed inside the house mainly. Um, I had a couple of people visit me, which was nice, but like I felt very useless to do anything. So it made the visitation a little bit awkward. Um, and then on the Thursday after, which was last Thursday for me, I went to go get my drains out. Now, I was absolutely shitting myself for this part. I was not looking forward to it. Like I was looking forward to seeing my chest properly for the first time without everything on it. But um, the idea of having like the tubes, which I could feel, that was one of the issues I had. Like I could feel the tubes in, if I like poked my skin, you could feel like the hard tube inside, which was just like horrible. I don't know, I get squeamish about like things being inside my body. Didn't like it. I was really shitting myself them taking it out. Um, I'd heard from some people it doesn't hurt. I've heard from other, like I saw a video of this like other trans guy getting it done. And he was like, he was not happy about it. He said it hurt. So I don't know. I was really nervous, but it actually did not hurt that much. So basically, what he did for the first tube, especially, he took off all the bandaging, which did hurt. But then, because he was like undoing the stitching and stuff, which was painful. He just kind of yanked it out, and I thought that was part of him taking the stitching out. Like, I didn't even realise it had come out. So, first one was really good. Second one, he did warn me he was going to do it. It's in the video. But, um, he kind of said, like, oh, I'm going to get that feeling. And I did kind of feel it come out, which felt super weird. And, um, then, because this one was, like, a little bit leakier, I guess. Like, liquid kind of went down the side, and that made me feel a little bit sick. But, um, all in all, not too bad. So he took the tape off my nipples, and the instructions for that basically were to not take it off until it gets a bit manky. So the first time I've taken that off since last Thursday is today, um, which is why I filmed me showing you guys my chest. I've already done that, but I'll show you in a second. Um, and I have a post-op binder to wear, which is the white zip-up one. It's not as uncomfortable as I've heard. It's kind. It's like it's less. It's more comfortable than a binder binder, in my opinion. Um, I guess it's just a bit of a ball like to have and it like rubs against my chest which is already a bit sore um, especially when I'm sleeping so that's not ideal but it's not that bad honestly it's better than a binder in my opinion personally um, so I have to wear that and I have to wear this tape which is to stop the scars from stretching so I have to wear the tape for about two months and then I have to use bio oil after that so it's kind of about when it starts healing and stuff. And um, since I changed that today, I thought I would give you guys a run of my chest. So here we are. Hi guys, it's Charlie. Um, I've just taken off the tape because it's getting a little bit manky and he said to change it when it did start to get a bit grim and then put on the new tape and keep my binder on. So I thought I'd quickly film this to show you guys what was going on while it's off. So um, I do still have a bit of swelling kind of around down here especially and up here but um, all in all it's not too bad I can feel that it's a bit swollen and I feel that it gets worse when I kind of push myself a bit um, I'm not doing anything too major but it's just when I am moving around a bit more the swelling tends to get a bit worse he said it's okay to try and stretch and kind of keep myself a little bit active um, and I'm sure that will go down but yeah, as you can see, I've got kind of scarring around each nipple. Um, this nipple has a bit of scabbing inside, so it's not quite as dark inside as it looks. But this, I have had an inverted nipple. I've talked about this in my other videos, but I've had this since I was born. He said with double incision, he would have been able to fix it. But with Perry, he can't. So that's just going to stay like that. Um, and this one isn't. Personally, I don't mind. I don't think it's too noticeable. Obviously, if I could not have it, ideally I wouldn't, but 
you know, that's just how it is sometimes. So I'll just come a bit closer. Um, so you can see around there, I have got a bit of ruching, which is kind of this slightly scrumpled skin coming in. Um, but it's not too bad, and I don't know if that will get better over time. We'll just have to see as we go. But I'll keep that updated, and I'll keep kind of doing photos to update. And then on this side, I've got obviously this going around the outside. I think this nipple looks really good. I've got a little bit of ruching around, but not quite as much as on this side. As you can see here, this is where I have my drains put in. So I've got one on that side, and one on that side. Those are healing really nicely. I think if they do scar, it'll be really, really tiny, and I've got the bio oil for that. But, um, yeah, that's the kind of, you can see where it's a bit swollen here. It's a little bit tender, like it hurts a bit, but nothing more than kind of bruising. This side's slightly better. But, um, yeah, all in all, I think it looks pretty good. At the moment, when he first um, showed me my chest, he said that the nipples were really even, very, very straight. Uh, at the moment, because this side has more swelling than this side, they do look a bit uneven, but with time, I'm like 90% sure that is gonna go back to being straight. I'll keep taking photos and like updates and show you guys what's happening with that. So, all in all, I am super, super happy with the surgery. I could not be more grateful. I know that my chest isn't perfect and I know that my chest will never be perfect, but I think that obviously it's better than it was before and not all cis guys are born with a perfect chest. It's just gonna take a bit of time to heal and there's things that I'm gonna do to try and make it better. And I am super happy with the results anyway, even if they are not what would be the perfect chest. Um, so I'm going to leave that video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment and I will answer your questions. Um, you can also follow me on Trans Boys or Us, which is private, but I will accept your follow request. And you can ask me any questions on there if you'd like to. I also have my private, which is Charlie Vanders. Um, I don't post much about trans stuff on there. Um, but feel free to message me on there if you'd like to. Feel free to give me a follow if you'd like to. It's mainly about my private life. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.